Maharshi has said that with the rise of I, or the ego notion, all else rises. And with its subsidence, all else subsides. The all else that rises is the non-self, the non-existent, the unreal. Since it is unreal, it does not actually rise. For the unreal does not come to be. And the reality or being alone ever is. But for those who assume the existence of an I, all else seems to rise. And there is division and dualism. It is the veiling of the undivided nature of one's own self, the homogeneous being consciousness bliss, that gives rise to the projection of multiplicity. In truth, the singular undivided existence alone is and always is. Because the rising of I, or the assumption of existing as an ego entity, is the cause of all else, that is duality and its consequent bondage and suffering. Abandonment of that ego is said to be the means to liberation. How can you abandon something that is not real? It is in the discerning knowledge of its unreality that it is abandoned. All bondage and suffering has its root in this ego eye. And with the dissolution of that false assumption, the potential for suffering is dissolved. With the dissolution of the ego notion, your own self shines for itself in self-knowledge. Therefore, all spiritual practice aims at the dissolution of the ego. And therefore, the most direct approach of all practices is to perceive what the nature of the I is. There is existence and there is the sense of I. And in delusion, the two are confused. So then you start just with that very apparently individualized existence and determine what its nature is. Its I-ness being unreal will vanish. What remains is the existence that actually has always been there. The real self. The entire inquiry is in is completely non objective. It deals with your immediate sense of identity, your ever present sense of existence. Discern clearly what you regard as I, yourself. Every idea about anything else is based on this idea of I. The definition of the self will determine the experience of anything else. If the definition of the self be the body, the world is experienced. If it is not, then not. If the definition of the self is a thinking entity, a thinker, or one defined by some kind of thought, then the mind will seem to be an existent entity. And ideas will be regarded as real. If that is not the definition, then that is not the case.
What is the true definition of your own self? The Vedas declare, Tatvamasi, that you are. Hematma Brahma. The self is Brahman. But you must find it out for yourself. And when I say find it out for yourself, while the instruction may seem to be posed to an individual, if that very individual being dives within inquiring who am I the individuality is not at all and only the real self Brahman is existing and that alone knows itself therefore understand self-realization to be free of the states or conditions of the body of the mind, of the individual entirely. There is no one existing outside of the self. Since there is no one else other than the self, it is ridiculous to speak of oneself being unrealized or oneself later being realized. There is only that which constitutes the realization, which is not an object, not an event, not a transitory experience, but just being, existence. Inquire within yourself and come to a conclusive knowledge of this existence.